you moved to Maui four years ago to semi-retire and photograph sand. You know, most, most people think to come to Maui and lay in the sand. You came to Fa Maui to photograph sand. I got really right into the sand. You got right into the <laughs> sand. And um, it's evolved into teaching and working at the Institute. Are, are you enjoying your life here? Well, you know, I'm really fortunate. I, I am every day, I just, I'm like a kid in a candy store. Mm. I couldn't be happier. Mm. I just couldn't be happier. I'm really enjoying it in Maui. It's paradise. Mm -hmm. Maui is paradise. I have everything in the world here I would ever want. It's just, just marvelous. And well, well, what, nature, what are some of the things? What, well, living elaborate. in nature to me is really important. I, I've always lived in big cities my whole life. Mm -hmm. And coming to Maui was a big change for me in that sense. Mm -hmm. um, I've never really lived in nature. Although my life has been sort of devoted to nature and studying nature, but I've never really lived in nature. So. Mm -hmm. It's been just a great pleasure for me to be able to do that. It's it's awe-inspiring to live in nature. It's it's it, it's uplifting. It it makes me feel great every day. I wake up and just look at how beautiful Maui is, and drive from Haiku to Pukalani. I mean, what a beautiful drive! And it, it just couldn't be more fabulous. And do you like the beach? Do you like? Do you actually like? Do you like to go? To, <laughs> do you like the beach? Do you like the I sand? Do, I do like the beach. I like the sand. I have to stay out of the sun. I'm a little sun sensitive. Okay. So, um, okay. I don't. Uh, I don't lay in the. I don't lay on the sand and, and sort of drink up the sun. You're anymore. not a basker. I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to do that when I was a younger man, but mm -hmm. more cautious. Uh, more cautious now, but I love to go swimming, and snorkeling. Hmm. And to be in the water, I've been a sailor my whole life, so oh. I, I love the water. Uh huh. Do you do um, any of that here? I haven't done sailing here, but I've, I've had boats and have sailed uh, my whole life, actually. Uh, in Los Angeles and London, I, I did a lot of sailing in the North Sea, and um, I love sailing. Well, speaking of London, you, um, you went to uh, UCLA and USC, but then you got your PhD in London and lived there and had That's right. family there. That's right. Well, t talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, I, my, my story is a little bit different than most people. I, I, I studied at UCLA. I graduated uh, with a degree in psychology and a minor in art. Huh. And then I knew I didn't want to become a psychologist. And I started photography and filmmaking. <laughs> Right in the beginning of the film, it looks like you're flying over Krypton. How could you make something look like you were flying over Krypton? And they came to me, and I did it through the microscope. And it turned out to be pictures of pancreatic cancer cells through a microscope. But it actually looked like this red and blue moonscape, and it really looked like Krypton. So I, for the next 10 years, I did photography and filmmaking at a company called Environmental Communications with my brother, David, and uh, several friends, there was uh, about a half dozen of us who um, were partners in the company, and we made films, slides, and videotapes of art and architecture and the environment. And this mm. is in 1969 during the early 70s when nobody was really, when very few people were documenting ecology and pollution, art in the environment. We, we wanted to show people how the art in the environment was more important than the art, or was more evident than art in museums. Uh -huh. So things like wall paintings, things like custom cars, tattoos, huh. gra uh, um, billboards, um, just all the art that was pervasive in the environment. We would show this and make slide series and films and sell them to um, uh, universities and libraries and colleges all throughout the world. So I spent 10 years just traveling all over the world having a lot of fun taking pictures and um, of art and architecture and environment. And then I started taking movies through the microscope and got really interested in looking through the microscope and taking movies and I was completely amazed at what I saw through the microscope when I first started looking through high power microscopes at living, I was looking at living heart cells beating and nerve cells. And it was just amazing to me that you could actually see the miracles of nature right in front of your eyes. Mm. And that's what really got me, I think, hooked. And so I moved to London and started a PhD at the University of London and uh, lived there for five years. 
at, I, at all at the same time, I moved to London, got married, had a child, and started a PhD program at the age of 33. Oh my so God! So that was a big, a Oof. big, uh, a big change. Yeah, and and you spent a couple years in the, my hometown of Philadelphia, and we just yes. got you. You love Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a, just a great town. I was there in 2000 and 2001 making microscopes. I had a microscope company there at the time. Where? Um, this was well. I my apartment was in, was is right in the middle of Philadelphia, but this was um, oh, near the art museum. Near, near the art museum, and and, and then we had a, a um, an offices and labs um, next near the, near the river near yeah. Uh, and it was just they were redoing the whole industrial area. There. That's right. And and, and there was the some, Delaware. Yeah. yeah, and it was really it was really nice. And Philadelphia is a great great town. It's got everything in the world there. It's got wonderful restaurants, terrific culture. It's a really manageable town. You can walk around anywhere. In fact, it's better if you walk because it was built way before they had cars. Yeah. It's not very car friendly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but it's nice you can walk around the whole place. Uh, so I really loved it there. Oh, good. It yeah. was great. Something we have in common. Yeah. Even though I, I love Maui more. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Very different. Very different. Yeah. And you teach at the Haleakala? I teach, I'm a substitute teacher at Kamehameha Schools. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and that's just a lot of fun for me. I, I love it. I just love being with the, the kids. The energy of young people is really, really um, uplifting. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, the trajectory of your life's mission started with biology and then to art, then to astronomy and microscopy. What do you feel is really just personally important in life to you? What, 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 what really makes you tick? I mean, obviously the science, but what, what do you love doing? What do you love? You know, nature to me, it's, I guess nature is the word. If I put it in one word, it would be nature. Mm -hmm. Nature to me is something that is around us, within us. It's what we are. The whole evolution of nature in this cosmos is so amazing. If you just look at who we are and what we are and what's around us, it, it's just a continuous source of entertainment, of joy, of inspiration. It's endless. It's endless source of discovery and exploration, which I really love. Mm. Well, I feel very fortunate that we have you here on Maui. Nice. Such, a, such a you know such a wonderful synthesis of you know the the artist the scientist you know the author so thank you very much for being here thanks for coming on the show thank you very much Steve I enjoyed it very much so it's a pleasure yep good so that's it for this episode of Life on Maui hope you enjoyed it as much as I did and welcome back to the next show until that time aloha. Crazy, but I'm never giving up my